You are tuned in to Kids in the Pit. Hey guys, it's Gabe from the Kids in the Pit podcast. Today I am joined by Matt from the band Barry Dead. Let's go. Hey Matt, I'm Gabe. Mind if I ask you some questions about your musical career? No, Gabe, let's do it, pal. Can I ask you a question first? Sure. How much editing do we get to do if I say something that I'm really embarrassed by? Eh, as much as as much as you need. Okay, all right, we'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. So, what do you do in the band Barry Dead? Um, I sing, I sing for Barrier Dead, if you call it singing. I scream. Yeah, it's not exactly, uh, it's, it's not exactly no. singing. More I hold the microphone and try to get people to commit felonies. That's what I do in Barrier Dead. Nice. <laughs> okay. So, uh, how long has Barrier Dead been a band? Uh, Barrier Dead's been a band since 2001. They started with two singers, Mark and Joe. And then um, they've gone through more member changes than you could possibly imagine. But for the bulk of Barrier Dead, I've been the singer. I've been the singer since 2002, 2000, wow. yeah. And then I left the band for a while in 2007 and then rejoined the band. But yeah, so a long time. Do you think you've had more members than Shai Halud? Uh, yes, uh, although they're they're what? also been through a lot. But yeah, no, we... Jeez. It's it's pretty wild, dude. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. So I'm pretty sure like Shai Halud's gone through like 50 members or something. It's they they're probably a close second, <laughs> and they but they've got a couple of core members that have stuck through it most of the time too. Yeah, so I know Matt hard. Fox has always been it. I don't know if yeah, like Matt them. Matt's been a big member of that thing for a long time, and other bands too, right? Like he's a busy dude. Yeah. So where is Barrier Dead from? Um. Well, we say Barrier Dead from Boston, Massachusetts, but nobody lives in Boston anymore. So when the band first formed, there was like a lot of us from kind of the Boston area. Um, Slim B, who I would say is like kind of like the, the center point of the band was from uh, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Oh. But now we're from all over. Um, I live in Paxton, Mass. Our drummer lives in Connecticut. We have a guitar player in upstate New York, another guitar player in LA um so yeah we're like we when we play shows we get a fly from all over uh, uh uh we guitar player in detroit so it's 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 chaos uh so for those not familiar with barrier dead what song should, should they look up oh i don't know i think that's a good question um I mean, we have a song where we literally just say the name of our band over and over again, and just try oh, to get people to hurt each other. Well, no, you don't just, your band is not called Barrier F Dead. I mean, it feels like that. It, we're a one trick pony for sure, but it's, uh, um, I think, I think the, one of the more recent songs that we put out, Collateral, is probably my favorite Barrier Dead song that we've ever done. And I'm not just saying that because I want to promote new music, because even that song is five years old now, but yeah. Uh, uh, collateral is like a really fun one it's it's a good song so what's your favorite place you've toured in and what's the most ex uh, obscure place you've toured in that's a cool one too uh, favorite place we've toured in like I don't know um, I like touring in the United States I'm like I was really lucky when I was young um I got to do some really cool stuff. This band let me really experience a lot of stuff that most people don't ever get to. So um, we did some like big amphitheater tours when I was in my early twenties that were like pretty wild. It was really cool to get to like travel on a bus and just see amphitheaters in every state. So I don't know, that was probably my favorite ones. Yeah. One of the more obscure places we played, we, we, we played on the upper peninsula of Michigan, which is like oh. the wilderness, like nobody ever goes there. We played a skate park that they had there, which was really cool. Oh. Um, but the best part about that was they didn't have a place for buses to park. So we had to park our bus at a, um, at a funeral home. 
So we had a giant bus that said bury your dead on the side parked at a funeral home while we played a show, which is pretty what? ironic and maybe disrespectful, but it was pretty funny. You were dead. So that's right. We're talking about bury your dead. Yeah. This is Rowan. Hello, Rowan. How old are you? Six. Nice. I am 11. This is, Gabe's 11. Gabe goes to shows. He's crowd surfs and knows all the words. Nice to meet you. What does he do? Rowan likes heavy music too. Nice. What's your favorite band? What's your favorite band? What's Uncle Danny's band? Okay, I actually like Bury Your Dead better. Oh, you like Bury Your Dead better? That's nice. Yeah. It's like I only have, I like only like half a song in Uncle Danny's band, but I like all the songs in North. Do you like half the songs for Uncle Danny's band, but all the songs for my band? Yeah. That's very, very sweet of you to say. Gabe nice. is wearing Uncle Danny's uh, band's shirt right now. He's wearing a Four Year Strong shirt. That's why it's funny because yeah. he likes Four Year Strong too. I like Bury Them More though. Oh, stop it. Okay. I do, I do. Uh, I, I do. I like Bury Them More. All right, go. We got to keep talking, but um, nice. I'll send you your check. Okay. You did great. <laughs> okay. So, do you have any crazy tour stories you want to share? I'm sorry, say it one more time. Do you have any crazy tour stories you would like to share? Crazy tour, tour stories. Uh, I think most of our crazy tour stories are probably not for sharing. Um, they Most of them happened before the era of cell phones and there's no video footage. So it's probably best to keep it that way. But um, I always say that Barrier Dead is the kind of show where like the stories are really the people that come to see us because they behave very poorly. And that's what I love about my band. So I guess all I would say is like, the best Barrier Dead stories are the stories that like people tell after seeing Barrier Dead about them getting hurt or their friend going, you know, and doing something stupid. Those are always my favorite stories. But um, I guess in order to not completely duck your question, do I have any good cool stores, tour stories? I got to ride roller coasters with Will Smith one time. That was pretty wild. Wow. Um, his wife's band, Wicked Wisdom, was on OzFest the year that we did OzFest. And there, it seemed like there was a lot of people that were like afraid to approach them, uh, maybe because they're like the biggest mega stars in the world um, or whatever. But Wilson's I was just wife has a band. Yeah, she's in a well. She was. I don't believe she's in a band anymore. She's in a band called Wicked Wisdom. That was like a power like metal band with a bunch of um, like important players from other bands, which was pretty cool. Getting to see her band was cool because they had members of other really important punk rock bands. But um, like what? Like there was um, like the the I'm good. I'm forgetting the name of his band right now. But like um, Ice T has his metal band, and then there was a dude from Fishbone in it. It was it was it was oh. pretty cool. Um, oh. But um. I'm trying to remember what the other members were because this is a long time ago this was 2005 2004 but in any case I was too young and dumb to be intimidated I was like 19 years old so I just walked over to them and I was just like hey how's everybody doing you guys having fun and then yeah. the next day we played Buffalo New York in the amphitheater in Buffalo New York is attached to a six flags in Buffalo New York oh. so the next day they like knocked on our tour bus door and I opened the door and Will Smith was literally standing there and he's just like, Hey, you want to go ride roller coasters? We're going to go ride roller coasters. And I was like, yes, I do want to go ride roller coasters. It was crazy. Well, okay. It's funny that like uh, Will Smith was a rapper and now his wife is in a metal band, is in a power metal band. Yeah. Yeah. I, when I say, I don't know if I would call it like a power metal band. I meant power in terms of like all the people in the band were like already famous from other projects. Like, oh. uh, like a super band is maybe the better way to put it, but yeah, it was cool. And I don't know that I don't know that Wicked Wisdom is a band anymore, but they were a thing back then. Yeah, that's cool. My mom uh, told me she got knocked out at a Barrier Dead show in like two thousand three. Yeah, she she used to go hard. Does she? Does your mom still mosh? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. She she last um... night d uh, during on Earth, endless. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she um, she was she also used to sing the words and be, yeah okay yep that's fair. <laughs> she 
she also used to sing the words, which would mean that she would always be like on the edge of the stage or on top of people's heads. And that's always a dangerous place to be when there's other people that want to be on the edge of the stage or on top of people's yeah. heads. But um, yeah, your mom rules. Did your mom tell you that she like saved our tour when our van broke down and she literally finished the tour by letting us drive her van around the country? She didn't. Were you yeah. in the van? Right? That was your blue van, wasn't it? I think it was green it's a it was a minivan <laughs> yeah it was it literally it was a straight yeah. up minivan we we did like i don't want to be on camera a full u.s tour driving in your mom's minivan towing a u-haul trailer that the van definitely should not have been able to support yes so you guys broke down in tennessee and you were just stuck and i had a minivan so we hooked up a u-haul trailer to my minivan and went all the way from nashville to i think boston and yeah, then we did, i, I think i just did like a bunch home. more dates so i sold your merch and we had them finish the tour <laughs> it was so sick You're welcome. like literally we wouldn't have been able to play shows anymore except for your mom was like i got a van we can just it do this fun. thing i washed every night <laughs> it was so sick so were you re originally not even on the tour no they just no, she's stuck. just a person supposed to at the show. my house and they're like Although we're you stuck in somewhere in tennessee so i drove an hour and picked them up Wow. But you were already making like buttons and stickers for us though, right? Like right. Were, um, I think I booked your podcast now. <laughs> I think I booked your show. You might have even booked the show, right? Yeah. So, I, so you weren't gonna make it to the show that I booked if I didn't go get you. So then we <laughs> did that show and then I'm like, well, let's just use my van and finish it up. And we did that's what it was chaos, dude. It was chaos it was back really then. Fun. Wait, so didn't you when didn't you have to drive your van all the way back? Wait, yes. so where did yeah, the like twenty five hour drive or something? Wait. Boston, I think. Wait, so that's yeah, probably hours? from Nashville, yeah. Because if you're not gonna do it in one shot, because you should probably stop and sleep at some point, yeah. It might be like eighteen hours anyway. Yeah, I think I think I think I've done it in sixteen. Your turn. <laughs> yep. Okay, so what was your first concert and how old were you? Um, I started going to hardcore shows when I was 11. Um, uh, the first one I went to was a band called uh, Blind Creation, playing a show with Final Prayer um, at the Espresso Bar in Worcester. Um, and um, it was cool. It was, it was really great. The Espresso Bar was a great little venue, very intimate spot. Everybody would just get on stage and jump off. And I was like, oh, this isn't what I thought concerts were like. <laughs> and uh, it was really great. I was nine going on 10 in like, I think like a week or something. So I beat you by like, like a year. I'm 11 now. <clears throat> yeah, your mom is cooler than my mom was, for sure. <laughs> uh, so what is a band you suggest other people go see play live? Band people should see play live? Um, What? You're just going to keep doing this. Mom, like Danny said, his mom is than your mom. Yeah, but your mom is not my mom. Oh. Yeah. So why are you going to my mom? It's, it's chaos, I know. All right. Um, I don't know. I, I You know, I, I don't really get into a lot of new music because I'm like an old grandma, man. Don't tell grandma, kid. Now. What's that? I said, don't tell grandma. Yeah, no, he'll tell grandma for sure. I'm a oh. Um, She knows she's not cool. Um... Uh, let's see, um, bands that, that if they played shows around here that I would go see live that people would actually see would probably be, I like Great American Ghost. My wife is signaturing something at me. Oh, we're going to see Life of Agony. Life of Agony is playing their 30-year reunion oh, wait, show. With they're, Sick they're of It 30... All. What's that? With Sick of It All. Yeah, with Sick of It All. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah. going to some of those tours. You're going to go some of those shows? Yeah, Life yeah. of Agony is playing River Runs Red front to back, so that's like a super important record. Wait, you guys are opening for them? No, 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 no. That's just shows that we're going to. No, I oh, wish okay. we were playing those. That would be, God, someday when I grow up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, American Ghost is good. They're heavy. Um, Kubla Khan is like probably like the heaviest thing that's like ever happened to this world. So if anybody, I don't know how you could possibly miss that band. Well, but it's, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like Cannibal Corpse is more heavy than Kublai Khan. Well, they're different kinds of heavy, right? Like Cannibal Corpse like plays heavy music and like certainly they're like talented, but Kublai Khan, sometimes I feel like Kublai Khan has secret messages in it that like make me do horrible things to humanity. So it's like, it's a different kind of heavy. Um, I don't know. 
uh, vocals with cannibal corpse are definitely heavier. Um, yeah. And then um, the original singer for Bury Your Dead, uh, Joe Kruko, uh, like just started doing music again. Uh, he's got a band called Edict um, out of Rhode Island that that are like really starting to play a bunch of shows. And um, they're really good. I, I, I really like his lyrics. And um, that's kind of like a like a kind of up and coming deal that is, is working really good. The, I like all the dudes in that band, Rich Gatch and everybody. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite movie or TV show as a kid? My favorite movie or TV show? Oh, that's Beauty and the Beast. Uh, I grew up super, super poor, so I didn't have like cable or anything like that. But we had this one VHS, this one video of the making of Beauty and the Beast that would, like showed them like animating that movie. So I used to literally just watch like that was like the only thing I had access to. So I would watch that over and over and over again. And now I can sing the the Disney's Beauty and the Beast from front to back without even watching the movie. I can I can do the whole thing. What like what do you mean? You can like say everything they. Or I just... can say literally the whole the whole like without the movie in front of me. I get little town. It's a quiet village every day like the one before, and I can do that until the movie's over. Amazing, you <laughs> guys. Cool. Barrier Dead has to cover a Beauty and the Beast song. Yeah, well, we have a record called Beauty and the Breakdown, but uh, we should cover Beauty and the Beast song. I think we would probably do Be Our Guest because it's got like two-step parts in it. Um, yeah, that's it. We'll do that. That's done. Check. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be amazing. So uh, if you had a time machine, would you travel to the future or back to the past? I don't know. What one would you do? Future, because I would never go to the past. Because if you like kick a rock in the wrong wrong direction, you might not be born. Right, like it's like safer to go to the future, I suppose. One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with you on that. The thing is, is I'm not particularly interested in what's going on in the future or what happened in the past. But for yeah, safety's sake, we'll go to the future. Yeah. But like, uh, that's, Gabe, that's what the happens? best bet in my opinion. Say it one more time. That's the best bet in my opinion. What uh, happens if we get there and there's like nothing there? Like you get there and it's just like post-apocalyptic, like wasteland, like an all-out war record. Like what? What do we? You what are we? Back. You just go back. Do yeah. you tell anyone? Do you go like, hey guys, I was just in, I was just in 2035. And it's 2035. It's not... That's in 13 yeah. years. Uh, yeah, dude, it's not looking good. <laughs> yeah, pollution is bad. So, hopefully not 2035, but... Okay, so you go and you're like, it was 3035. Do you tell anybody that it's like the outlook's not good, or do you just like keep that to yourself? I mean, no one's going to believe you. No one is going to believe you that you had a time machine, you went to 3035, and the world was ending. No one is going to believe you. Yeah, I suppose there's no point in telling anybody so they can just be like, all right, crazy. Yeah, they're going to be like, you fell into a coma or something. Fair. Yeah, so future it is for sure. Yeah. Um. So if you could tell your 11-year-old self anything at all, what would you tell him? Um, go to shows and have fun. Nice. Um, um Forgiveness is super important and love is all that matters. There you go. I'm nice. sure my wife is laughing at me from the other room, but <laughs> what do really you like it's to... true. Yeah. Would you like to add anything before we, uh, we end the podcast? No, I appreciate you asking me to do this. I've seen your podcast that you've done with other people. I'm glad I didn't talk as much as uh, your last podcast guest and uh, <laughs> the. Uh, I mean, he uh, was still really cool, even though he talks a lot. No, no, he's the best. He's the best. He talks a lot because he's the best. He's like such a personable yeah. dude. Yeah. Um, and he did he talk about wrestling? That's what I would want to talk to him about because he knows everything about wrestling. Yep. He said his like stage presence was like wrestling. Yeah, so, I believe that. I'm just uh, modeled after those bigger than life personalities, just running around up there with a saxophone or whatever he plays. Does he play saxophone? Is that what he plays? He does play saxophone. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
Um, no, thank you for asking me to do this. I don't really necessarily have anything particular to add. We don't have like new music coming out. We'll probably play four shows in 2023. So hopefully people come see those shows and uh, yeah, keep stage diving. Don't get hurt. Also, uh, at, uh, whenever you're talking to uh, Dan for your strong next, uh, maybe bring up his podcast because it'd be really cool for him to be on. Here. Yeah, let's let's see if he's going to do this thing. Hold on. Right now? Well, I'll, I'll call him. We'll we'll see. I don't know if he'll answer. Right now, before we on before we end it. Yeah. Okay. Well, then. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if he'll answer my FaceTime, but we'll. We'll try to do okay it's ringing unsolicited facetime is kind of a dangerous game to play kind of no we lose all right well the next time i talk to him i'll tell him that i did it and it was harmless it's fine uh and also if he uh maybe it's a good thing that he didn't pick up because what if he was like naked Right, that's what unsolicited FaceTime is a dangerous game for sure. It is. But no, he's probably, honestly, he, his kids are also home from school on winter break. So he's probably also just trying to avoid them like I am. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Matt for joining me today. And thanks to all of you for watching or listening. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Spotify and other streaming platforms. Till next week. Bye. Bye. This was fun.